Jill McDill and I am a polymer clay artist. I get to play with clay all day long. I'm super lucky. So I'm going to teach you how to make some really fun little creatures out of your polymer clay. But I thought first I would show you around my studio just a bit so I can get your inspiration flowing. I like to make all kinds of creatures and vessels and objects out of polymer clay. So you can see my little wall here has some sculptures on it and even some little teapots and pitchers and things like that. So I'll show you around just a bit. So maybe you can get some ideas of some different little animals you might want to make. I've made all kinds of creatures. This one's like a little worm, but it's got wings. There's some other little fun monsters and birds, fish, elephants, a giant snail, and there's an elephant with a rocket that happens to be a teapot, and a horse, and some mermaids. So many ideas. I bet you're going to come up with something really cool today. So the materials that you have to make your little creature, like these guys here, are your um, colors that are all mixed up and ready to go. They are uh, lots of different colors. You should have white and some darker colors, so we'll be talking about which colors to choose depending on what we do for a technique. And then you'll have your scraps. There's who knows what in there. You might see some little tiny pictures. And you'll have your um, little toothpick and eyeballs. Be really careful with those eyeballs. They are not baked, so they're still soft and squishy, which makes them stick really well. So be careful that they don't break them up. And then you'll also have your piece of tinfoil. This little tinfoil is shaped with sort of a body and a head, but it could become almost any animal. It's up to your own creativity. Maybe just by looking at that piece of tinfoil, you might get an idea. Now remember, you can sort of bend this a little bit, twist it a little bit, but don't take it all apart because it will be really hard to put it back together again. And then hopefully you have found yourself some kind of rolling pin. You've got a Crayola marker, works really good, or this is like a, a little wooden uh, painted block, works really good. Anything cylindrical, even a glass jar, like a glass, a really straight glass would work, but just gotta be careful with that. So what we're gonna do are a couple of different techniques that only mostly use your rolling pin as a tool. And, oh, I forgot about this. This is also a tool. So we're gonna use this when we need to like make little chopping or cut little toes, different things like that. What we're gonna do is called the Skinner Blend. That is where you get this sort of like gradation from light to dark. I did that on his wings and then on this one I used it on his body. So you can see how it goes from dark to light. The best colors to use are gonna be a really light color and a really dark color. So with my colors that I have here, I could go with these two or I could go with this one. I think I'll do, I guess I'll do this one. It'll be a little different than last time. So the, what we're gonna do, you, you know, if you don't have to use your white, you could use your other light color, which that'd be pretty cool, but white really pops out. So the, the first thing you wanna do is make sure your colors are nice and warm. Kind of roll them in your hands a little bit. Get them going. Get your body moving. And then we're gonna form it into what I call a carrot shape. So it's sort of like a little tiny uh, little pyramid or something, or like a cone shape, but it's, I think it just looks like a carrot. That white one's probably hard to see, but you can see there. And it's a pretty short little carrot. Don't think too long, but it gets to have a little point at one end and a bigger end on the other end. Just like that, two little carrots. Yeah, here's where you do this magical technique. You're going to lay these carrots so they are small end and large end, small end and large end. And you don't quite reach you could make your point just a little pointier, but I don't quite reach 
all the way over. Just leave a little bit left. Okay, now you wanna make sure this doesn't get too long. That's what we kinda of keep doing is keeping it short. What we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda of start to flatten it with your fingers, just to make sure they're kinda of heading in the right direction. Then grab your rolling pin, whichever kind you have, roll it flat, and then we're gonna repeat this over and over and over. So always fold it like a taco this way. Don't ever fold it that way because you don't want the dark color and the light color to get together on that end. You just wanna keep folding it so you have a little bit of each color. Just fold it into a taco and flatten again. And then fold it into a taco again. Now, if you find that your clay is sticking to your surface, your tabletop, you can use your little card. It's so useful. Use it like a little spatula, pick it up. But when you do that, make sure you don't turn it. Always keep it dark color, light color. And fold it over like a little taco. And then roll it again. It seems like nothing is happening, but before you know it, there's going to be some magic. I say you have to do it at least five or six times before anything really happens. So I'm folding again. Now you will notice it's getting longer. So here's how we shorten it. Going to take it and I'm going to roll it up. Instead of like a taco, I'm rolling it like a sleeping bag. Roll it all the way to the end. And then I'm gonna make it shorter by smooshing that in. Smoosh that in, smoosh that in, shorten it up, shorten it up, and then flatten again. So this takes some work, but you will see the magic happening very soon. Even already, it's starting to get kind of cool, isn't it? So folding it over. And what's happening here is the colors are starting to blend and they're getting thinner and thinner every time you do this and they're starting to see through underneath. So, you know, if it's sticking to a table, remember to use your spatula. There we go. So, I'm just gonna do this a few more times. Good. So that just kind of depends on what I'm going to use it for. I think I'll just set it aside and then I can decide what I want to do with it depending on what I'm going to make. Now we're going to do another technique with our other colors, all but one. So save one color out to be used. I would say use the darkest color and then save out one that maybe doesn't look like it a little too, I don't know, could be anything. Hmm, I think I'll save out this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my darkest one, or you might take your biggest one. It just, you know, you could kind of, if you can't decide between two, go with the darkest and the biggest one. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make it into a pretty thin, flat blanket. Now this one is going to stay all one big solid blanket. So I'm gonna set that aside. Then the other ones, I'm gonna do the same thing. Take these and make them into flat blankets, but they don't have to be any shape. They can be any shape they turn out to be. And actually, this one is a little bit better if it's a longer shape, but don't worry, whatever shape it turns out to be, it's gonna be just fine. It's kind of a random sort of thing we're gonna do here. But what we're gonna end up with are some cool stripes.
but don't worry if it breaks up because what we're gonna do is we're gonna rip it up anyways so take your big flat darkest one and take your smaller colors or whatever they might be a little smaller and we're gonna make rips off of them and we're gonna just cover this up with layers and layers of little ripped up pieces you're going to use all your colors up any way you want. But try to cover that whole entire piece of your big blanket. It's that dark color. all up making like a big almost like a crazy pizza with lots of big chunks of topping now I'm going to take this and lay it so it goes a long way and we're going to roll that with our rolling pin don't worry there's not as much rolling as the first one we did that one first because that takes the most work <laughs> yeah we don't want to wear you out so we're going to roll that just flat just kind of squish all those colors together and then here's what we're going to do we're going to see how I stretched it a little bit. The longer it is, the better. Let's kind of stretch it out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to rip off little pieces, pretty small pieces, but we're going to stack it each time. So I don't know if you can see how I'm doing that. I'm taking off a piece and I'm stacking it up, taking off another chunk and stacking it up and making a little pile of ripped up pieces, maybe about five or six or so and I'm stacking them together kind of like that then I'm gonna lay them so I can see those stripes so I'm looking down on those cool stripes and I'm gonna flatten that out see how it just sort of randomly looks like stripes it's, it's supposed to be sort of wavy like a kind of like a landscape you get those stripes coming through really randomly and every side is a little different so these look really cool, like on like his feathers or something like that, or stripes on an animal, or that's what I used on his arms. So you never know what you're gonna get. It's very experimental. Oh, interesting. All right, so got some parts there. Now it's time to we got that. we can make some details with our scraps and with our last piece, but let's save those for later. Those will be for like when we want to make like a tail or something else like that. So First, let's try to cover the body. So these two techniques that we did are great for covering the body. So I think what I'll teach you, well, we'll do the, um, let's do the body covered in these stripes. This all, you could do either way. This one, I've got different shapes. So I'm going to roll them out maybe even a little bit thinner so I can stripe them around. So I go striping, which way should I stripe? How about striping around this way? It's almost like little scarves. 
striping around. Now make sure and you look at your pieces, which side you like the most, because they're all different on each side. I'm just gonna kind of lay them pretty close to each other. Stripe. will be. Sometimes you get ideas just by the colors. Now I could leave that as a little head thing. Get an idea. Sometimes you just let things give you ideas. So maybe that'll be a little funny head thing. I don't know what it is. Now it looks like an elephant. See? You just get ideas from whatever you get. But I don't think it's gonna be an elephant. I think it's gonna be something else. We'll see. We'll see. Just let it be what it wants to be. So I've got little spots. So see how I grabbed my little rolling pin and kind of rolled around? You can also use your hands, but first I'm gonna get this spot covered right here. Mm -hmm. Fill it all in there. Sometimes you can just squeeze it together, squish it together, and use your rolling pin to squish it together. But your goal is you wanna get that tin foil all covered up. The reason that tin foil is there is to help it bake better tiny little spot. I'm just going to grab a little smidgen of this and add it on there. There we go. There we are. It's rolling away all around. I don't know, maybe it does want to be an elephant. <laughs> or maybe. Don't ever think that you're doing something wrong because the clay trying to give you an idea is usually what it is. Okay. So now, now I think I'll take this and I'm gonna make it into some little legs and, or it could be like shapes like a little wing. So it's really flat and really big right now. So I think what I'll do is I'll just fold it smaller, but now I don't wanna fold it this way. Don't ever fold that way because then you lose your big color difference. So what I'm gonna do is sort of squish it into a shape but by thickening it. So see how I'm kind of thickening it? There we go. So if I was gonna make wings, what I did when I made wings was I made kind of a thick piece like this and then I just cut it like in a triangle like that. But I wanna get four pieces, so I have an idea. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to just keep on squishing it together. And then I just kind of want four pieces that are dark to light, so that's pretty easy. That means I'm just gonna cut it in half and then cut it each half in half. And then I've got kind of a nice little piece of clay that goes from light to dark. Looks really pretty. So these are gonna be my little arms. Let's see. I think the dark end will be the hand. So uh, anytime you're making hands of any kind, it's the easiest thing is to kind of think about a triangle. So I'm sort of making it into sort of a flat, thick triangle. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my little card and this is how I'm gonna make the fingers. I'm just denting those fingers in there, just like that. That is gonna be his little foot. He's gonna have a little foot. So see how I just turned it a little bit? make his little foot. Anytime you're gonna make an animal that's gonna be like standing up, I would keep his belly onto the ground somehow. It make him either have really short legs, so his legs are just barely, or it's sort of squatting, sort of sitting down. If you wanted to make him really tall, standing up, then you'd have to put toothpicks in there, so. I really do have, if I want to make kind of smaller legs, I'm going to actually squish this shorter. I'm just going to use one of these and I'm going to cut it in half. 
So you might end up with a lot of extra too. You might have enough to make a whole nother animal. When I made his fingers that make him really pointy like that, I just give him a bit of a pinch on each little toe and you can make longer fingers. I'm keeping these kind of rounded so he looks a little bit more like a mouse. Now, you know what? I think I've got a good little chunk for an ear. So maybe what I will do is sort of roll this together to make that ear. It's turning into a mouse. Okay, how about a tail? I'll make a really fancy tail so, so you can use this technique with all kinds of different animals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my plain color and I'm gonna make it into a little worm. Kind of a short worm, but not, not too short. Maybe something kind of about this long. If you wanted to measure, you could probably make it the same as your card. Then I'm gonna take some little bits from my scraps. These scraps are so useful. I could use my little card. I'm gonna just add decorations all around on the outside. This is how I made the tail feathers on this guy and his tail and some of his other details, like even his lips. So, Gonna take all these little smear around. If you find like a little chunk that's like a perfect little pic picture, you might want to save it. Maybe you want to make it into an accessory for your for your animal. Because these scraps are great for accessories. You could make like a little flower for him to hold or a little food bowl. You could make him a little hat. You you know, one time somebody made a whole little unicycle rocket. <laughs> That was creative. Okay, so see what I did? I put them all on there and now I'm rolling it and then I'm gonna give it a little twist. I don't have to twist it, but twisting makes it extra fun. Now that is a long tail, but might be a fun tail to make him holding something in his tail. So that's where the creativity really could come in. You are super creative, so I'm sure you're gonna come up with something cool. So here's the thing. Now if I was gonna bake this and I wanted it to be sort of sticking up like this, then I need to put like a little bit of tin foil or a tube, sometimes like a little, um, uh, this is like a toilet paper tube sort of, those kind of things are really great for holding things up. Because in the oven, even if you can get it to hold there for a second, when it bakes, it'll start to slump down. So you always wanna kind of prop, especially things that stick out a lot, you wanna prop them up with something. Tin foil or tissue paper works really good um, and so do like little rolls of paper. So I will definitely do that when I bake him up, especially if he was gonna hold something in his tail, which well, you'll see, I'll play around with that. All right, well, let's put on his eyes so he can come to life. And then I'll show you just a couple more fun things you can do for playing with it. And then it's really up to your own creativity. Well, those eyes are super, super fun. I'm gonna separate them just a little bit. <laughs> He's looking off to the side. Like, where's my cheese? I know I put it here somewhere. Then I'm just gonna look at my scraps and find a little bit of something for a nose. So many different ways you can make noses. A little ball works well. You can also take your toothpick if you wanted to make little nostril holes. You can poke little nostril holes like that. That looks good on a lot of animals. There's a little fun nose. And then see like a toothpick is handy for, you know, like a detail, like maybe or a little mouth. If you wanted to, like when I made him, I wanted him to have a little texture. So I did a little dot. On this one, I even made little fancy swirls. So toothpicks are great for poking. Maybe I could make like a little heart on his little, on his little leg with some dots. But it, I feel like it's a little easier to control as dots but that's kind of fun. So those are those ideas. Uh, if you were gonna make a beak, I'll show you a really quick how to make a beak. That's when you just take your little scraps, whatever colors you like for a beak, and you're gonna form them into like a little cone, like a little ice cream cone shape. 
and then to make it so it's open, take your card, slice it, and pull it out, and you've got a little open beak. You can pinch it a little bit more if you want to, and you could put that right on. Otherwise, all the other details on here, just little fun scraps. And I made his little um, spikes on his back from little scraps. So many different fun things. Just his lips, lips on any kind of animal. Mostly I do by making a worm and then pinching those ends. So sometimes I'll twist it and pinch it. And that makes really nice little lips that you can curve around on something. So many fun ideas. And just play around and see what you get. You'll wanna bake these at 275 for 30 minutes, which is on the back of this little card that you've got here. And then let it cool off before you play around with it because right when it's cooling off is when it's actually hardening. But once you pull it out of the oven, it'll be pretty strong. Still be gentle with it. If it does break, you can use super glue to fix it up. But it's a pretty permanent little guy. So have fun and create away.